Welcome to the Preview of the Nevatris. It's like one of the many episodes, but this is no, we, like I said, I'm doing the half hour episode or roughly close to it. However long it takes for me to go through some of the stories I have for all of you on this episode. Thanks for listening in, finding the show. The website is dbradio.live. I completely read this on the site, but on a WordPress site, it looks better. I like it. I hope you like it too. And if you want to look at all of my content, the King of Podcasts radio network, of which I have three shows, and I also have my music playlists, if you want to catch those for yourselves too, kingofpodcasts.com. That's with an S. Kingofpodcasts.com has everything I'm doing, and I hope you'll check it out for yourselves. Because I really am proud of what I've done with the site, and love you to check it out for yourselves. By the way, I have the three shows. That is this show, the Resicles Real Podcast, and the Broadcasters Podcast. Plus, I also have for all of you a wonderful thing where I have my talk programming, which is that one spot, and then also have music playlists. Hopefully you're a Spotify fan, because if you are, I would recommend you go and check out those music playlists that I put up there, because they're very different formats of music, and I really am proud of what I put together, and I hope you'll like it too. So check it out for yourselves. Right now, kingofpodcasts.com. Everything is there for you. Let's get into the stories. A bunch of things I want to bring up on the program tonight because this is the ongoing doldrums of dating can't help but fall along with that right now and just say it's just not good I'm not happy about it I'm just not happy about it but I'm not doing anything about it myself except I'm, I'm talking to some you know guys and gals out there to offer my take for those that want to listen to it but then that's why I have this show to get my word out there much farther that's what I think is more important Dating has just gotten to a point where when I look at who's dating at all, I'm trying to think, did I talk to anybody this weekend when I was at the Uber or anything like that where I talked about it? Because one thing I think about when it comes to, comes to dating, and it used to be a big thing for me, was how far do you go to drive to see a date? With online dating, that became much more of a prominent thing because before online dating, and I'm going back to 1994 and love it AOL. I don't remember thinking, oh, I'm going to go and drive down to Miami to go see a girl. Unless I met her already. Because the thought of saying, okay, I'm going to meet somebody that's down, you know, farther away. Social media has created that whole idea that, oh, well, you know what? Maybe I don't mind driving down to meet somebody an hour, two hours, three hours away. Maybe I don't mind getting to an airport and flying over across the world to go and see somebody. Because now that's much more common. We see the stories. You look on TikTok. It happens all the time. How far is too far? Cosmopolitan puts out a good story about this. How far is too far for a date? And I like this. So there's a woman that shared an opening message she received on Hinge. And by the way, there's two Hinge stories i got to bring up on the program. But here's the first one. Now, she received the message from a man that simply read 730 drinks next Thursday at 456 in Williamsburg. And she responded by saying, I'll bet that $100 that bar is down the street from your apartment and you didn't give any consideration to the fact I live on the west side of Manhattan. And it was in response to a prompt on her profile saying the best way to ask her out was opening with a time and a place. So she goes on to TikTok and talks about it and says, let's be serious, quote, for a first date, you want me to travel almost an hour away from my home or spend $60 if I choose not to switch multiple subway lines. Okay. If you're a guy who wants to get a girl far away from where she lives, but she's super close to you to drink on someone's grandma's sofa, and then walk back to your place so you can get some, she continues, that doesn't even make you a bad person. It makes you just a certain kind of person. And then somebody wrote back to her and says, he didn't do anything wrong, LMFAO. Shouldn't have matched with him unless you were interested enough to provide an alternative. Good answer. This is very entitled. This is very, oh, expect expectations loaded. Yeah, time and a place. Could have asked, how about something closer to me? And actually, the common rule I've always had was, if I was going to go and meet somebody... Meet halfway. So if I have a girl that meets me in Miami, 
I'll meet her in Fort Lauderdale. If she is in Fort Lauderdale, I'll ask her to meet me in Boca. I actually did that quite a few times. But the problem is that long distance is tough, especially if you're driving. Or you're, unless you don't mind the fact that we're so busy all the time that we don't have time to date every every other night or date, you know, at least once a week. Because that's another question. What's the frequency on dating these days? I mean, we're not supposed to be like high schoolers where we meet each other every day on, on at, you know, at school. But think about that. In your late teens and college, in your 20s, like, okay, after college, for instance, once you're out in the real world, how often is the amount of frequency that you want to be able to date someone? And how close should they be so you can date with them regularly? That's a question. But the thing is, we're not even worried about that right now because the first dates are so hard to come by. And after that, if it's just a hookup, so what? These are the things you used to think about, but these days nobody does. And then they go along and say that, one of the person writes about that, like, it's crazy how much easier it would have been to say, oh no, that's kind of far. Is there anywhere closer between us? But then it would be nothing to be angry about. Right. See, a little bit, there's a little bit of that, you know, sarcastic, passive-aggressive kind of feel to because that's what she was doing. And I think it's true. Another person says she knows the divide between reactions on TikTok and Twitter, that her following on TikTok is mostly female. On Twitter, it was mostly guys that responded back to her negatively. And then she also got our, one of her TikTok messages. I think it is the cheesiest thing, in caps, when guys pick a place near them. Sinai, replied one woman. And for those that said she could have suggested a different venue, she pointed out that she has her location visible on her Hinge profile. Right. She doesn't want to go ahead and put the work in. Like, it's a double standard. I'm going to just say this. Because if it's a guy like me, I have to repeat myself. I have to explain myself sometimes. And sometimes I have to just let a woman try to understand what I'm trying to say. But if I ask her for that, there's something wrong to do that. Like to put her through the trouble of an explanation or a suggestion or a recommendation or, a f you know, maybe some input or feedback, something. Some women just expect that we just need to go and do all the work. It just is that way. Guys, just be used to it. Accept it. If you're the more dominant of the two, if you're into someone with, if you're with same-sex partners, the dominant of the two is expected to do all the work. Just remember that. She also says that as a woman, considering your safety and comfort while dating, you can never really overthink anything. And that's the other part. She was never going to be interested in this guy in the first place. She threw this guy under the bus just because of the fact that this guy responded with a day and time. Right? Let me just put that out there, okay? Because this was overblown. And I think she did this just to get the attention on TikTok and Twitter, which is share where she has followings. Right? We don't know anything about what this guy says afterwards. All he did was... 733 is next Thursday at 456 in Williamsburg. That's it. As far as I know, and she says, apparently we're dispensing with hellos now. She asked for that. In her profile, the guy actually was reading it and followed the directions. He did not look at just her pictures. He actually read. Maybe he didn't read the whole thing, but he probably saw that part where it says, this is how I want you to respond. She says, we're dispensing with hellos now. No, we get to the point. That's what guys do. Right? I think you were trying to be cute, right? So why can't we just be cute off the bat too? Is there something wrong with that? I don't know, but that's a pretty good question. And then she responded snide, snarky. I'll bet $100 that bar is down the street from your apartment. Either you get any consideration to the fact I live on the west side of Manhattan. Well, I guarantee you what that guy did. If he was smart, he didn't answer back. Because that right there, that's a no. That's a no. I would have just said, okay, done, swipe. Or actually with his hinge, yeah, you know, unmatch. 
Well, that's what I would have done. That's pretty bad. And of course, she wants to go inside the guys or the girls. But this Cosmo story, I can read it straight through. That's what she did. This young lady decided to go that route. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but she wanted to see if she would get out of it. Now, don't get me wrong. She's a beautiful girl. A beautiful girl that expects a lot. And let me say what her, this is. Her name is Clark Peoples, by the way. And, and if anybody gets to learn about her, she's a content creator. Yeah, it's a content creator. This was clickbait. She was able to get somebody to respond back. Look, you look at her website. She obviously loves to show that she is enjoying lavish things. She dresses very, very well on her website right off the bat. Buy my planner, Amazon storefront, work with me. Money, 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 money. This guy played it safe, right? Because he also didn't want to get her in New York. I think it was being considered and saying, meet me in Williamsburg, a little bit outside of the city. So for her to complain about, oh, well, I don't want to take the subways. Okay. $60 ride. Okay. But the thing is, and by the way, Clark, sweetheart, you still have your copyright as 2021. You need to update that. It's very important. But don't get me wrong. That's what she did. And Cosmo, they took it upon themselves to write the story. Good for them. Pretty, pretty easy story for you to write. All you have to do is just sit there and look at Twitter and TikTok and follow this girl because the person that wrote it probably follows her. I saw this story as a good way to get in there. Lois Shearing, I bet you that's what you did. I almost, I could bet $100. That's how you did this. But I'm not going to do this snarky comment like Clark, uh, Clark did. I'm not doing that. No. But that is exactly what happened here. Realize that. That's how it is. Another hinge story. This is delusional. Now, she might be doing this on purpose. Clark Peebles must have been doing it on purpose because she wanted to make some content. That's what she did. And she got a response for it. Good for her. Good, good for her. But now let's get to another young lady. Oh, no, same story. Ah, thank you. Yes, my hinge date tried tricking me. Now, haters, haters say I'm single and miserable. Another time, she says, she's 22 years old. Thank you, New York Post. 22 years old, and she goes on with this. And she posted the screenshot from the Hinge conversation on Twitter. Uh-huh. Video amassed over 295,000 views. And as far as I know, I'm looking at the story here. Okay. Oh, uh, by the way, The guy wrote back in the screenshot. We get to hear the other part of the story. Ah, thank you, New York Post. He responded back after she said this. Let, let me uh, let me put it like this. Now we can actually see the messages. She makes the comment about, I'll bet $100 that bar is down the street from your apartment in Williamsburg, and you didn't give any consideration to the fact that I live on the west side of Manhattan. Yawn. Emoji. And he wrote back... You'd win $100 in the first part, but I took all that into consideration. I figured you probably don't come out to East Williamsburg too often. Next Thursday is going to be gorgeous, and this bar has a nice outdoor section. He was being considerate. And, and by the way, not Starkey, because he even says, we can't see the part that was blocked out, but he says, I guess he gave a number or Snapchat or Instagram or something like that. If you change your mind on me being inconsiderate, he's humbling himself. But this girl is still going to just throw him under the bus. I think the guy was being totally cool about it. She's a student at Columbia University. And so, like I said, he suggested to meet at a patio bar near his home in East Williamsburg in Brooklyn. Okay. She then assumes what this guy is doing. Here's more of what she says. 
I basically clocked what he's doing. And then she says that the less than chic outdoor bar, she complains and says, quote, this looks like the Salvation Army opened up a lounge with all the furniture nobody bought in 1984. So it might be something vintage. I don't know. But wow. Because, I mean, where does she want to be taken to? You know? The rooftop bar of the Mary Marquis? Mm hmm. I don't know. Hudson Terrace? Mm hmm. I don't know. She said the man's offer to meet up at a location near his apartment was nothing more than a feeble attempt to get sex, calling his approach inconsiderate and insane. Assuming. Assuming it's sex. But she probably doesn't let anybody get that close to her anyway, for what it's worth. So she bashed the guy pretty strong. Okay, I see the bar. Yeah, it's an outdoor kind of spot. And then she complains about one spot where it's all this random furniture sitting in the back of the outdoor bar. It's tacky, but that's like the point. It's kind of like thrift store chic. And she complained about it. Okay, then she doesn't need to go. It's not her bag. No harm, no foul. But why does she want to throw this guy? I mean, she didn't show the guy. That's good of her. But she decided to use this as bait and you know, throw it under the bus. Now, she also complains about the fact that but it is very smart if you're a guy who wants to get a girl far away from where she lives, but super close to you so you all can walk back to your place afterwards because you want to get some. Doesn't it make you a bad person? Right. That's the point she was making. And then one commenter says that, does your bio also say you refuse to leave your neighborhood? LOL. Why live in New York if the biggest problem here is not wanting to take a train or Uber to a different neighborhood? Question mark. Sounds really close minded like a red flag. That's probably somebody on Twitter. Yes. So it's a guy, obviously. She's, she's going to say it, but it's a guy. And then another person says, you want hinge, girl, be humble. And then another person on Twitter said to her, quote, you are seriously out of touch with reality and need to reconsider your whole life. Please remove yourself from the dating pool until then. Right. The thing is, she shouldn't be on my dating. You're in New York. You're in Columbia University. You're in the middle of everything. How in the world are you not dating and just talking to guys that, that approach you? And pick the one you want. You're young. You're beautiful. You're doing this on purpose. You're doing this on purpose. Let's just make that point across. We see, I saw what you look like. You're a beautiful girl. You're smart. You're going to college. You're going to make something of yourself. You're a content creator. You get it. When I was in New York a few weeks ago, trust me. If you wanted to have somebody to meet with you and you can meet and talk and whatever, I don't think she'd have any problem dating anybody from her campus that she wants to meet at whatever place she wants to go. She, if she just goes out, she's going to be approached. That's the other part. She probably gets approached all the time. But she'd prefer to go and do this on social media, you know, prefer to use the online dating and try to get this out. This is the whole point. She's in New York City. Like, some places are not so much like this, but there are plenty of eligible people in New York. How ours are you single in New York and you're not date? I saw plenty of people out on dates in the middle of the day. Yeah. You know? Okay, the guy doesn't want anybody to come to Brooklyn. She don't want to go to Brooklyn. Fine. But I'll tell you what. If you wanted to go see her, go to the city and go find her. I mean, you could have just done that and just see what happens. But the truth is, I mean, she's probably not wrong about the whole long distance. Get her down to a space where you know, it's going to be too much for her to go and make her way back and give her an excuse to stay. Right. She's not wrong on that. She's probably pretty much right. I agree with that. You know why? Because I've done it. <laughs> I have done that a couple of times. But either which way. Poor girl. I think she just put herself in a spot and, you know, it was, it's upsetting that he, he upset her to have, have to do that, right? 
And then she f- closes her address on social media with a word of encouragement. Quote, you don't have to lower your standards for anyone. You can be single for the rest of your life, and you'll probably be happier than half the people in relationships. That's mostly true. But, she also says being single is not an illness. Men think women are desperate for companionship and they are that are they are for sex. That is a problem. No, she's wrong now. She also says I have the most literally have the most basic standards ever. Wrong. Wrong. No ma'am. No ma'am. Now, let's break down what she said there at the end. You don't have to lower your standards to anyone. Correct. But as we know, what happens with there are some women and there are some guys as well. I'm one of them that I have always lowered my standards and I've always gone after girls that were not. I mean, I could have been going after girls at a higher level, but the work and the maintenance and the kind of time to be spent and the resources, the money being spent would have been a lot. You have to hold out for the right person. And I said to myself, the girl that's going to absolutely want to be with me can never live with the idea of not having me in her life and will do whatever it takes to love me and be with me and be my cheerleader and be my support system. That girl I hold on to. That girl I put a ring on her finger. That girl, I give her my world. That's that's who I wait for. But in this, that last part does hit a nerve. You can be single for the rest of your life and you'll probably be happier than half the people in relationships. You can but I, old buddy king of podcasts here, tells you don't do that. Make every attempt. Keep your head on a swivel. You never know when that right person comes along. Sometimes you'll never know, and sometimes you might miss him or her. So keep your head on a swivel. Be nice to everybody. And maybe the right person that was supposed to be your life, that you will love forever, will approach you, will find you, will bump into you, And happily ever after. Believe in that. It can be true. It can be possible. You have to believe that. Especially if you are young listening to this program. If you're listening to this show, you're hearing the sound of my voice. And ladies, if you are between the ages of what, 16 and 35. Guy, same age. You should all have the hope of finding someone to love. And to be able to put all the love in your heart to make that possible. If you don't, you don't need to be like this young lady, single for the rest of her life. And poor thing, she's 22 years old. This is her best life. And she feels like that's what she has to do. No. No. Listen, she's enjoying herself. But eventually, if she wants to be a mother, she wants to have... A husband, and she wants to have, you know, that two person, he wants to have that companionship, wants to have somebody that can, you know, with both incomes together, can really live a great life. Why does she want to do it all on her own? It's not right that she's not in love. My question is, why is it that she feels that way? I wish I knew. Because I don't know if, I don't know if this young lady does that, says anything or not, but I, I'd love to know what it is that caused her to feel this way that she can feel like she could just stay single and it's okay. And then she's trying to do this dating, but it's this snarky, passive aggressive, narcissistic, manipulative kind of feel to it. I'm not going to just call it out like that, but it feels like that. There's a lot of red flags that just flare up when she does that. Like the whole deal of it was very narcissistic on how she said about. Oh, you want me to drive an hour away? Like, she's she's validated, but the thing is, she's putting the guy down the whole time. She's negative the whole way through. That's not a great attitude, especially when you go into dating. Like, give us yeah. golden rule. Do you want the guy to do the same thing to treat you just like that? Clark, do you want the guys to talk the way you do to them? Do you want them to just be snarky and negative and and always criticizing? 
Because I remember a girl that did that to me. And I went to Miami to go see her. But I went down to Miami to an oyster bar at Bayside. That's what she chose. I got there. I found it. And you know what I did? I quickly got us out of there. Because I was like, and I drove down there, by the way. I didn't ask her to come up here. She had just moved to the area. I, I went down there. Okay. I went to downtown Miami. I met her at Bayside Marketplace. I went to this oyster bar right on the water. Hey, view's great. Don't get me wrong. Not my kind of place. I took her to 8th Street to Cayocho. Great restaurant. And things got better from there. But still, the negativity, the starky comments, everything going on, she couldn't help herself. Was just angry. And listen, she was younger than me, mid-30s, professional. She was a teacher. Beautiful girl, own place. She lived in an apartment complex. I forget exactly where it was. But I mean, honestly, she was 15 minutes from Bayside. And I dropped her off at her place and I picked her up, by the way. No, no, I'm, she was already there. She had a friend of hers that she met over there in Bayside and then she got dropped off here. And I met with her and I, you know, I drove around after that and then I drove her home. But even that day, it was a date, an afternoon date, by the way, in the middle of the weekend. And I remember after all those comments, the criticism, I was like, man, she just beat me down for what? I don't know. I'm not going to find out. But I told her, I appreciate, I, I enjoyed spending time with you, but I don't want to do this again. I don't feel that like we should date again. We don't need to see each other. I just gave it up. First date. I didn't tell her on the phone after that. I said it right then and there. I let her go. No hard feelings. I just there was something wrong there. I feel like Clark here with four A's and Clark with a K E. I feel bad for her. I actually feel bad for her because I think she's indicative of a lot of girls. And the problem is she's also given that message to other girls out there. Thinking this is okay. Listen, not every girl is gonna be like her. But just because she has she's in great shape. She's living in a way that a lot of other women would love to live like. She likes to live healthy. She likes to spit, splurge and spend great times going out. Nice bottle of champagne, a nice glass of champagne, a flute. If she wants to go ahead and go to whatever clubs, go traveling, go whatever she wants. She could jet set. She's going to make her career. She's a content creator. She can do Instagram posts. She can do TikTok, Twitter. She's a beautiful girl. She's naturally beautiful. And... She feels like this is, and, and you know, there's an entitlement and there's also a narcissism because she understands her value, but she's not, she doesn't appre appreciate anyone that appreciates her value. She looks down on them. That's sad. It really is. And I did make mention I was going to talk about polyamory because there was a story about this. Because USA Today decided to talk about it and what you should know about it. Oh boy. Two people fall in love, get married, stay exclusive until the end of their lives. That's monogamy. But then some people might feel more comfortable like themselves if they're in polyamorous relationships. As celebrities have spread the awareness of this, Willow Smith opened up about being polyamorous on Red Table Talk two years ago. And she says, quote, with polyamory, I think the main foundation is the freedom to be able to create a relationship style that works for you and not just stepping into monogamy because that's what everyone around you says is the thing to do, the right thing to do. I was like, how can I structure the way I approach relationships with that in mind? And then he go to the explanation. And explain the whole thing, and they say that, in case you're interested, you know, they, they say that, well, actually, they talked to a psychologist here that explains all this. A family and marriage therapist talked to USA Today and explains that some people who are asexual or aromantic might identify themselves as polyamorous. Their description of the boundaries around the relationships are going to be personal and self-defined in those cases. I'm hearing a lot of that. Also, no emotion, you know, no, nothing that's very romantic, anything like that. They're relationships that are just based on convenience. And the question is, is it a sexuality? Well, USA Today says this. No. Anyone of any gender or sexual orientation predicts a polyamory. Some are in it for sex, but others are for emotional intimacy or a combination of the two. 
this is not a good option either. Like we're already having enough trouble for somebody to go and meet one person. I want to try to meet both. No, no, I can't, I can't do that. Can't swing like that. No, 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 no. So thank you, Clark Peoples, 22 year old, beautiful girl in Columbia university there in Manhattan, the West side. Thank you for giving me a story to talk about here on another edition of the Praise and the Botrists.